every Jeep Wrangler advertisement out there you're going to find is it driving up the side of a mountain or going through a freaking river. Yet over 90% of Jeeps sold never leave the pavement because they're selling a lifestyle. And then here comes Volkswagen. And it doesn't do that. <laughs> Welcome to the Coffee with Jeff and Jason podcast. Tune in for freshly brewed discussion on everything you need to know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your hosts, Jeff Tessier and Jason Harris. We're going to do this video thing. First thing I do is I'm like, we're going to build a video room. So I took one of the rooms that we had in the office. I painted everything green. Like, I mean, and, and it would. It was like seven coats of paint, by the way. They get the entire room green. You know, bought that. We bought the lights. We bought the camera. I went in there and some of the very first videos. I wonder, Austin, if you could actually find those. It was the green screen videos. I think there was only like three sessions that we did in the green screen, uh, in the green screen room. And then I realized, like, I got a job to do. <laughs> I got to build a business. This is the stupidest thing ever. Like, what a waste of money. Like, I can't be sitting in the office shooting videos all day. This is horrible. Uh, so that so then I, I went to the store very frustrated and I found this uh pimply little teenage kid, and he's like, dude, you need a GoPro. So then I went and got a GoPro and uh I mounted him in the car. And at the time there was like two of them. There was like one up on the windshield here and then one on like passenger side over on the other side. And I was just like recording and we were getting those edited and stuff like that. But then it became very obvious. Like this was, it was the same position, same scene, same everything. Like something's got to change. Right. So I was like, let's put, let's put a, uh, uh, a uh, ad out there. You know, I need, um, Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Austin. Gary V's. You rock. I need a D rock. That's what I needed. Cause at the time, like that's what Gary was doing. He was like always on the go shoot a lot of stuff. And I'm like, it's visually appealing because it's just always changing. There's new scenes, new places, new stuff. I need a D rock. So we write out this whole thing and at the very, very end of like the job description. I'm like, all right, I need you to be my D rock. If you understand what this means, bypass everything and just DM me directly. <laughs> we had over 200 applicants like apply for the job, right? Austin was the only one that DM'd me directly on Instagram. So he went find me. How did you find me on Instagram? You just looked it up. I don't even remember if the Instagram was even. Um, big, I don't even know if I had big Instagram following. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it mentioned in the ad that you had the uh, strategy of Jason Instagram, and I remember looking that up, and yeah, just DM'd you from there. So he DMs me, and I remember Jamie. Jamie was my assistant at the time. Um, and I told Jamie, I said, Jamie, found a guy, he's coming in, we're giving him the job. Um, <laughs> she's like, what? I said, yeah, he's going to come in. I may or may not be back in time for the meeting. Just give him the job. Um, but I did, I did make it back in time, I think for the meeting. Right. I think I did. Yeah, you were there. Um, I remember the interview was like a few hours after I DM'd you. <laughs> it was literally the same day. <laughs> it was. Oh, that's right. It was the exact same day. I said, dude, if you can come in, come in now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's very quick. <laughs> <laughs> but he knew it. Like I said, you know what I'm trying to achieve? He's like, yes. I'm like, okay, done. You're hired. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was... yeah. The exact idea. Like, cause uh, yeah, I was a big fan of Gary V and what D rock was doing for Gary. And um, yeah, I think that concept makes a lot of sense for a lot of business owners. So I think it's a good idea. Because uh, that, well, I remember because we had went to a, and the reason I got introduced to Gary was um, Facebook held a conference in New York City. And um, at the time we were doing like a stupid amount of Facebook stuff and Facebook automotive, it, like the, that, that kind of segment just started, like just started. Wow. So like Facebook invited us to come to this conference and it was going to be Gary Vee. It was a, it was a fireside chat with Gary Vee, right? So we went down there and when we got back from New York, that's what I was like. I need a D rock. We got to find one. <laughs> and what's that? What has that been? What? Six years, Austin? Close? Uh, four years. Four years? No, oh, come on. Mm. It's got to be five. Is that no. long? Jeez. All right. Time flies. No, man. it's just four years. Well, I guess that now. makes sense. I was, I was probably doing, I was doing content for about 18 months, I think, prior to me. So it's been, you know, like my content trip has only been about, well, probably close to six years. I bet you probably getting into this winter will be it'll be close to six years. 
I know it was winter time when we first started shooting. That's I, that I do remember. It was cold as hell. <laughs> All right. So right. how is yeah, it's interesting how it's evolved. Sorry, what was that? Well, you know what, though? Here's the bottom line. I'm still an amateur at it, right? I mean, think about this. Like, I've done over 700 podcasts. Um, I think we've recorded how many terabytes of video? <laughs> <laughs> Countless. Many. <laughs> well, what would you guess? I don't even I don't know. What would you guess? Five? Ten? I mean, 12? I have have, like, those... Those twelve, uh, like, wh oh, what are each one on four terabytes of, of uh, hard drives, and there's like twelve of them, and they all have like footage on them. So, dozens so wait, of terabytes. Well, it's forty-eight like, terabytes there. <laughs> Plus, if you haven't cleared anything, right? Like any old stuff, or <laughs> that's crazy. Four forty-eight. I maybe some. Let's call it fifty. You know, fifty some odd terabytes probably floating around out there of video. Jeez, I'm lady. <laughs> mm. I made a joke the other day because I was talking to someone and we were talking about building out their like content bucket, right? And he's like, "Well, how far in advance of a content bucket should I build?" And I said, "Well, you need to give yourself a buffer at least at least a month, right? Like build a month's worth of bucket before you like kind of go into it." You know, but the ironic thing I'm thinking about it. I I I could probably die tomorrow, and you guys could probably still post for the next eighteen months. <laughs> and no one would know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> All right. So what we want to talk about? Should we? Uh, we get to talk about anything and everything. Should we talk about um, getting fired? Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what size? <laughs> How to properly fire a vendor that you've had a decade of business with. Let's talk about that because that's a fresh <laughs> wound right now. <laughs> I can talk about this. So, Austin, I don't know if you know this, but we've recently lost a client. All right. And that happens. Right. It's okay. All right. But this client we've had for a decade, 10 years. I mean, it's our, literally probably one of our oldest clients right now. We've seen management change multiple, multiple times over the time that we've been with them. Right. And um, they let us go over email <laughs> and i'm just i don't know it rubbed me the wrong way you know i just figured after 10 years of service you know there would have been a courtesy call you know and um it's new management okay so again we get used to this a little bit so new new management place and they have a tendency of kind of doing things however they want to do it and i find that new management doesn't necessarily respect the tenure sometimes of of some of these partnerships right and you know there were a lot of things about this particular one that rubbed me the wrong way so you know the, i think the one thing you know for anybody out there that's employing vendors is you know it's constant co communication you know i just I, you can't assume that your vendor can read your mind and just know what you need to be done you know like i was in constant communication i would have you know weekly or bi-weekly huddles you know, and a huddle is not a meeting, by the way. A huddle is like a 15-minute check-in. Like, all right, this is where my goals are. Are you working on that? How are the results looking? Okay, good. You go do your job. I'm doing my job. Boom, 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 done, yeah. right? And I don't know, man. I'm, I'm finding right now, not all of our clients, and I don't think majority of the industry, but I'm finding there's this, there's this kind of, you know, need or want for just an easy button. Like, I just want to hit the easy button. Just just don't don't talk to me. Don't call me. I don't want to get involved in the strategy. I don't want to be a part, you know, of the success or the failure of a, of a campaign. Just automate everything for me. And I don't know. Maybe I'm concerned with the ne this next generation of management is so focused on just automation, easy buttons, that they're forgetting that, you know, you actually have to sit down and craft out a strategy. Right. Yeah, the workload to get to that point, uh, you know, it takes a lot more, right? So you, you need to have, like you said, those constant communications. Check-in points, you know, we can't read the minds either. Like you said, we don't see the traffic flowing into the dealership. We can see outward traffic, but we don't know how that's translating to actual foot traffic in the store, right? Sure. But and I mean, then let's, like, talk about the breakup. let's talk about the breakup because, you know, that's where I'm I think sore. that's the most important part here is, like you said, right. by phone, 
would it have been different though? Like, really, you're you still probably would be just I, as I need, dude. I didn't even get a tax. You know, know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, but you would have been just as frustrated. But I think it just shows respect and a sense of like ownership of it. Right? I don't know. Like, respect, manhood. I don't know. Like, it's kind of sad to just send an email. It's You've been sad. great. See ya. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for everything. You've been great. See ya. Um, but let's call it professionalism, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Austin, you ever been broken up by email? Anybody ever break you up with you via email? Mm, no, that'd be weird. <laughs> it would be awkward, right? You spend 10 years with yeah. somebody, they break up with you. But by text, email. for sure. You know, I probably would have been okay with the text. <laughs> Like, why does that does that seem weird does this seem like i know we're going like total rabbit right here but like does that not seem weird that we value like the personalization of a text message over an email like like does email just feel like i'm look guys maybe because I'm, I'm aging myself and jeff you're the same age i mean i remember one point in time when you got mail was exciting i got an email somebody sent me something like this is cool you know like <laughs> nobody cares like it actually feels like the most impersonal form of communication anymore is an email I'm like oh, man, thanks yeah never thought of it like that but you're right <laughs> isn't that funny what and a text message just email etiquette kind of bothers me how you have to be so formal and be like hey how is your day going and then actually say what you're talking about instead of just getting straight to the point and yeah i think that talks to the whole lack of personal element where yeah, you're trying to be so professional and it just feels all like stiff and corporate, you know? You know, I've actually been given crap sometimes for being too, you know me guys, like I email like I text message. I mean, I know you guys have made comments you hate it, but I'm literally almost put my entire message in the subject line and not even put anything in. <laughs> I do, I'm horrible. I'm horrible at email. I really am, right? Like I'm very much so like, you know, I don't even type my first name. You ever notice that? Like, I don't even go, hey, you know, like, right. No, like, hey, Austin, right? Like, I'm just literally just right into the body of it. Like, because I think it's weird. Like, I'm sending you the message. You know who I, you know who it is. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't right. know. Yeah, there's just so oh, much like unnecessary formalities. Well, and I find that true in marketing, right? So, like, when it's people that still do, like, uh, is there a place for email marketing? Sure. Is it the, is it at the height of my totem pole? Like, Probably not, no. you know, but like, even then, like, I mean, just the lack of just being a human <laughs> in email is like disgusting. Like, you know, like we don't read drawn out paragraphs of information, you know, like we, we no one, no one consumes content that way. Like we consume it in these bite-sized texts, hundred, what's up? What, what's a text message? 124, 126 characters, 130 something. I don't know. Something like that. Right. I think all emails, wouldn't it be great if emails were just the same way? You have 130 characters <laughs> to complete this email. And that is it. That is it. I actually think it'd be better. But, you know, I get, I'm going to be honest with you. It's almost too much now. Like when we talk about communication, it's too much. Here's guys, 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 this is what I have right now. Like, check this out. I got text message. I got WhatsApp. I got five different email addresses. I got Slack. I got Teams. Um, what else? Oh, I got Google Chat. Yep. Um, like Facebook Messenger, LinkedIn Messenger, Google Facebook LinkedIn. Messenger, yeah. Instagram. Like, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm almost to the point where like I'm the level of connectivity. I'm almost kind of bugged with. I don't know if it's actually healthy or not. Speaking of information overload, um, let's talk first. about. Elon Musk's new X app. So his uh, <laughs> his plan for this new X, which is formerly Twitter, is that he wants to create an everything in one app. So it's going to have banking. It's going to have social media, obviously. It's going to have e-commerce, sort of like WeChat in China. Um, but yeah, that's essentially his plan is to combine all the different apps into one and um, create one super app. We but everything that, that Zuckerberg wanted to do, but didn't do. <laughs> so everything so Facebook said they were going to do? To. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember that's that's what Facebook was going to evolve. I remember uh, 2010, 
all right uh ted talk style com you know you know chat from from zuckerberg and literally almost verbatim said this exact same thing um then we chat went ahead and did it uh you know what look if anybody can do it i think it's elon like he's got the money you know and what is like but but i also would say not, not only can he do it but what what, what do you what, what's behind it what's the why anybody like Okay, I think cool. to, to gain back the user, the usership, right? I think is what he's trying to do there. I think it's convenience in terms of just everything okay. being on one app. It'll be like, yeah, it'll dominate the market if it does get adoption. And then, yeah, it'd be just great for the consumer to have everything they want to do just on one app. I remember, you know, people were talking about this when WeChat, you know, kind of came out. Like, it, there was so much fear of having everything in one place right i mean i personally like to you know i mean look there's a reason you know and yes i have my wallet but you know i diversify over multiple cards if i lose one card is it going to be the end of the world now the truth of it is that when i lose this thing i lose all of it it's a shitty day you know what was the, jeff when was the last time you lost your wallet oh, i've misplaced your phone it. or your phone Right. I've misplaced it before, but never I've lost it. it. <laughs> but it's it's a pretty scary, crap day very scary, happens, right? Yep. You know, so like, I mean, I even think, you know, like, I have four different bank apps, you know, that I have to use, right? But you know, one was down the other day. I don't know, man. If everything was in one place, I don't know. like they said, they, they, everyone's fearful on WeChat because of that reason, but it worked out. So if he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Well, I guess the, the only concern that I would have is that if it's in one place, it's easier to tap in and access all at once versus like, like somebody stealing your wallet. They've got everything. They've got your license. They've got your uh, home address, your all your credit cards and everything's gone, right? I mean, face it. I mean, everybody, it, look, but get, I, I think it's nowadays really, it's so easy yeah. anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, it's true though. I mean, if someone really wanted to get your information, they get your information, right? Um, my question would be, and is, is what is he doing with the data behind it? Because I understand yeah. the convenience, right? Like, you know, a lot of people don't. Re you know, realize this, but you know, the original Facebook model was to charge customers for it. Yep. You know, I, was, I remember if it was six ninety nine or fifteen dollars a month or twenty five dollars a month or something. I don't remember what the amount was, right? But the original model was to charge people a monthly fee for this. All right, and therefore, you know, being able to just offset oh, how they actually monetize the data. You know, um, that's a lot of data points in a singular app. I'd be curious to read the whatever 57 page document of how and what they're going to do with the data that's being collected off of that. How it's going to be used or stored or sold off, monetized. Yeah. It's going to be monetized. Obviously, that's that's what these like all of these that every social network out there is just it's in like it's a data collection farm. That's what it is. It's farming yeah. data all the time now what they do with the data and the responsibility of that now that i can change you know <laughs> I, here's the thing you know i think consumers out there they're so scared of their data the bottom line is your data is going to be collected it is going to be shared all right um, it already has been <laughs> it already has been like you know look if you ever received any type of loyalty card or reward for anything look if you ever Anything, nothing's free. You ever sign up for anything that said, here, sign up, sign for this and get a dollar off of this? You gave away your information. That's how it is. Every loyalty oh. card in the world, every uh, Kroger's card, uh, Publix card, uh, uh, Shopper's card, Walgreens card, whatever, what, they, they all sold your data. <laughs> every single one of them sold your data. Like nothing. You know, and I think that's one of the biggest arbitrages out there uh, right now is 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 data and how it's being uh, how it's being sold off or what purposes are it being sold off. I mean, we're seeing a monster amount of that right now as we ramp up for uh, the upcoming election. You know, like th th there there are data farms. That's what these social networks are. So I would just hey, I yes, you know what, Austin, I I I I like the convenience. I would do it. I would do it. I would do it. Like there's convenience, right? So I would do it, but 
I would, you know, be curious to know, um, you know, what are they going to do with the data and how are they going to monetize it? It's going to happen. I mean, I would, if, if I'm getting enough, I would give up my data for value, right? It's an exchange, it's an exchange, right? So like if I got everything I need in one place, all right, you got my data. Yeah, I think we talked about that before with automations and stuff, right? Like if, if you're going to use that data to serve me up something that I have shown interest in or something of interest to me versus just spaghetti attack at me, right? I don't need to see 100 different items. But if, if you know that I've been researched into like two weeks ago, I was looking for uh, basically a connector to take my uh, pool vacuum skimmer. Mm -hmm. down to the vacuum hose sorry so like a one and a quarter inch hose and it's a one and a half inch so the difference is they don't really kind of do that thing so i go to home depot i go to canadian tire everywhere right guy at home depot is like well you realize it's different with plumbing right i'm like yeah you're right so i'm in the store googling because i can't find anything he's like inside and outside diameter for pool is different than than plumbing measurements i'm like oh this is going to be fun at the end of the day, he suggested that I find a poly connector. But I, in the store, researched on Amazon, and I'm still getting, it's a $1.49 hose connector. And I'm still getting it. served up occasionally. This is like a few weeks ago. Hey, we've got this. We found this one for you, right? <laughs> it's crazy. So, I mean, in some respects, I don't mind when it's something that I've engaged with and showing interest. But I don't want to see every little device out there, right? Yes. You know what? I look, you guys know I'm totally into fishing right now. So I get a lot of fishing ads, you know, different poles, different reels, different baits, different lures. I don't mind it. I enjoy it because I didn't know a lot of this stuff existed. Right. Um, the funny one right now is um, I'm in market right now for a, um, a chainsaw. <laughs> Does that sound dangerous that I'm getting a chainsaw? For you? <laughs> <Yeah. actually? laughs> Here, well, look. Yeah, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I, what I've come to realize is that everybody owns a chainsaw here. Everybody. You get well, When you get it, you got to make sure you, like, you know, rawr, rawr. <laughs> give it a couple well, of minutes. You know me, too. Like, I go looking for a chainsaw, and I'm like, there's chainsaws, and then there's there's chainsaws. Like, yeah, yeah. Did you know that you could buy a competition chainsaw? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want to be able to cut through a tree and you know, 3.7 seconds. It's the most Tennessee thing ever. Well, you know, you get to tell me they wins. actually have competitions there. Dude, they, you get these big windstorms that come in, these trees fall down and they're just sitting in your yard and you can't move the whole bloody thing on its own. You no. got to get the damn thing down. So everybody here owns a chainsaw. I don't. I'm in market for a chainsaw. If anybody watching and listening, you got suggestions, hit me up. Let me know what I should get. <laughs> There's one brand but, on the tram too because they use orange steel. It's, it's an orange. I knew it. But they're actually a really good brand. So I know, I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Austin. What else you got? <laughs> yeah, but uh, just one point. The interesting part of that sort of X app, that everything app would be, yeah, they have data on absolutely all your internet activities. So they would know you better than any singular platform that is just collecting data on that one side of your activities you know so if they had your banking they had your entertainment they had your shopping activities they would know you better than any other app no i like i said i wouldn't be opposed to it i just i i think just to be a responsible adult these days you have to ask the questions like what are you gonna do with the data and who's you gonna know, read like, i know i'm conditions that are something? 27 pages like you said right like i know I just, I, just, I just want to know like I, it's not even that i'm necessarily going to disagree with it i just think i want to know what you're going to ultimately yeah. end up doing with it you know it's like i think data is 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 an incredibly powerful tool it's you know what is it what's that spider-man saying with great power becomes comes great responsibility <laughs> like <laughs> There is, there's going to be great power in having that data and, and what they do with it, I think is important. All right. What else, what else you got? I like this. This is, this is, this is crap that you found on the internet. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Something like that. Something like uh, that. I want to see if you have any thoughts about this. We got <laughs> Carvana is up 617% in three months. You don't want to Stock. know why? You want to know why? Because, because you smell that? 
It's called profit. <laughs> mm, smells good. It's right. It smells good. That is everybody right there smelling that fresh baked apple pie smell of profit. And they're all just kind of drawn back to it. Right. So look, bottom line, these guys couldn't figure out a freaking way in the world to turn it to, you know, to make a dime. And, you know, they're getting they're they've never been closer right they've never been closer so yeah these it's it's that smell it's it's like that it's not fully baked right the pie is not fully baked but people are beginning to smell it and it smells good so people are drawn back to it but man that would have sucked if you were i mean i wonder how many of those people also just bought back in because they feel horrible on, on how bad of an ass kicking they got over the last you know last you know six months <laughs> Yeah, what well, was it like a year or two ago, right? Like, what was its all time low? Pull it back up, Austin. What was its all time low? Yeah, it's in the last 12 months. Was it $13 or something like that? No, it was like six. Six. That's right. Six bucks. Can you imagine? Yeah, but uh, like a hundred some odd dollars down to six shares. And now you're back up to what What was it today? 52 is it right now. I think it's that, right? Man, look at me. I like, hey guys, I like roller coasters. I love a good roller coaster. Yeah, this so peak was 349 August 2021. 20, <clears throat> and it went Can down to four dollars in December 23, 2022. I don't know. Look, I'm still the actual concept, like the concept, all right, makes sense to me. You know, um uh and I think dealers can do this they can do this they don't like the, the fact that carvana is doing it it's just it's because dealers are too lazy to do it themselves because they can do the exact same thing if they really wanted to they could do the exact same thing in fact they could probably do it better you know um but i do believe that there's still merit in the model all right i think from a user experience there's still merit in the model but um they're, they're, they're getting closer it's smelling better it's smelling better that's what it is Good for them. But do you know? So did they solve the issue that caused? Well, they sold such a off collapse? an obscene amount of their crap. They got rid of the all the real estate, things, yeah. right? They got rid of all the fat. So they got rid of all the fat. They slimmed it all down, right? And a lot of that uh, profit for my now is actually coming from wholesale. <laughs> it's it's not actually retail. Um, that's one thing you don't see in a lot of those articles. It's a lot of wholesale business, and that's what's bringing them back, uh, back in the black, right? Um, but um, no, look, I. I I, again, I just, their business, the model from a consumer experience perspective, I get. I don't think it's necessarily for everyone. Um, it's still a model that's not been perfected. Uh, they still have issues as far as, you know, um, as far as paperwork and, you know, what states require, you know, what signatures versus digital signatures. So there's still, there's still a lot. A lot of kinks work to work out there still, you know. But they trim down the fat. All right they went hardcore in a wholesale model all right uh they're, they're they're showing some profitability and you know that that pie is smelling better and some people are coming back to it i don't know if it's going to last forever to be honest with you like that's a it was a solid strategy i'll give them props like cheers you know you guys <laughs> you had to do something um and you know you did it it was a good strategy, and it's it was good enough to bring enough people back for the for the stock to come back up. Uh, will it will it sustain? I don't know. You looked at it, man. That's a bloody roller coaster of a stock in the first place. Um, Imagine being along for that ride, buying at the low points, thinking, "Oh yeah, we hit the jackpot." If you stuck it out till three forty, and then the next week you look at your app and you're like four dollars. <laughs> I, mean, I, I look at it this way: it's like you know, it's like think of this as like a, a team that was on a winning streak. Then they go, then they drop off, you know, for whatever reason, full belly syndrome, whatever. They're just not practicing anymore. They're just not connecting. Now they start to connect a little bit and people are like, oh, they're taking notice because historically they were, you know, there were some highs, you know, so they're taking notice again. But look, I think this is just, they just showed that they can, they can win a little. I don't, they haven't shown they can win a lot yet. Right. So it's like battle number one, they swung, they connected. But they still got nine more innings, I think, to show us that they're actually going to be players here, right? So, I'm I'm not I'm not jumping to any conclusions. Um, you know, good for them that they came up with the strategy so that they you know show some profitability. 
um I, i'm personally i'm not buying too, too much of a roller coaster for me <laughs> so you said dealers yeah, could do it that, better it's a model that dealers could do you know like if it's if who is really engaged with that kind of on online purchase really in the dealer world, right? Well, I, I think the model might have been a little early, right? Yeah. Um, look, guys, there was a point in time that, you know, we said the same thing about leasing, by the way. I don't know if you guys know that, but at well, one point in time, they're like, this is the stupidest model in the world. This is never going to work. No one's ever going to lease a car for a few years and bring it back. Like, this is ridiculous, you know? So there's been models where people just bashed it. Like, the same thing happened with the internet. Oh, I'm never going to have a website. I'm never going to do that. My customers come to my store to get pricing. <laughs> Screw them if they want to go online. I mean, I, I, I've literally had, like, I've been in the business long enough where I actually had some of those conversations. You know, where people just look me straight in the face and just said, screw you and your website solution. You know, I my my clients are going to come to my dealership. You know, so it's an evolution and we all fight it in the very beginning. You know, um, what stick? Who knows? I mean, the model's not, <laughs> I don't know. The model's not as old as people think it is. It's not as new. Sorry, the model's not as new as people think it is. You know? I mean, people have been in the car dealership long enough. They remember receiving faxes. Jeff, did you ever get those fax leads? Yep. <laughs> you know, somebody from another state would send in a fax lead saying, I'm looking for this kind of pickup to, 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 to this kind of price. If you can agree to it, ship it to me. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I worked at BDC in 2000, between 2006 and 2007. All right. You know, we drop shipped over 180 units wow. across the country. You know, just, and you know, we actually had to hire notaries and notary had to go out and get the signatures and stuff like that. So I mean, look, it's not necessarily just like a, a new model. Anyways. Becoming an acceptable though, even to like banks now, or they're, they're coming on board and getting digital signature abilities to dealers. And so there's ways you can do certain things, right? But okay. Anytime there's a, a um, so they call it an evolution of a model, we all, you know, rip it apart, right? TV was going to destroy us. <laughs> Radio was the end of the world. <laughs> like, anyways, I digress. What else you got for us, Austin? <laughs> like you've probably seen this car before, but have you seen the most expensive Cadillac in the world? Three hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Can, can I get it in orange? Did they make it in orange? <laughs> they did have colors here. What was it? Jeez! If, 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 it, if, if I get an orange, I'm I'm in. Oh, they got an Aurora. That's almost Ooh, orange. What's it close to an orange? You know but what? Yeah. I love when, I all love electric. When I love when manufacturers do stuff like this. I, I absolutely love it. And the funny thing is, I think they, 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 what, how many units did they agree to? And they sold out of the reservations like the first day or something like that. Yeah, I think they were like a lot of, uh, there was only so many reservations. Super fan. Yeah, they have a lot of like uh, throwbacks to the classic car, you know, like little Easter eggs and stuff that they put it into it. So if you're a super <laughs> fan, like this is your ideal car, you know? I love this. It takes me back to like old school, you know, back when, you know, a car was, a car meant something, you know, there was like a lot of passion behind it, right? You chose it. Design and yeah. build behind it, you know, and, 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 you know, you would have manufacturers that would build these low quantity, you know, vehicles like this, right? Special like, off they, units. Yeah, yeah. Special one off units, you know, they just didn't build like this, but it's cool. Like, I mean, I will say from a design perspective, it is gorgeous. I mean, I love the lines on it. People look at the back end of it and they're like, someone just ripped the back end off of a BMW i8 and slapped it on there. I'm like, well, I think the ass end of a BMW i8 is beautiful. So I think you might as well slap it in a large sedan because that looks awesome. Because that looks <laughs> no, I think I, I I think it's cool. Uh three hundred thousand dollars for a for a GM product, though. <laughs> That's at the end of the day, you gotta remember that. Don't worry, you're good for three years or sixty K. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but look, Cadillac was the epitome. Um, I think it's cool that there, you know, there's this throwback. I think it's cool that there's enough people out there that are willing to buy into, you know, something like this. It is low production. Um you know, we look. If you look at what like Ford did, right, with the um, what's the supercar crap? I just had a moment. Um, Jeff, help me out here. Watch cars, sorry. Oh, the uh, GT. The GT. There you go. Oh, okay. right. Whatever it was, yeah. You know, small production, uh, throwback. Great Easter eggs in that one. Throwback, but a, a solid performing vehicle, like a very, very solid performing vehicle so yeah, yeah i think it's cool and if an orange but 300k for a gm product i don't know, i want to hear from anybody out there watching listening would you pay 300 300 000 for a gm product <laughs> well i don't i mean i don't know look at the corvette i mean <laughs> people were paying what 200k for a z06 or z06 yeah 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 and then they're selling them on the uh, at auction even higher like it's right crazy. like i don't know the funny one well, i remember thought, we were at the auto show that too, was, right? Yep. At the auto show, we saw that Cadillac section, and there was uh, what was there that new line oh, of cars? Got? The uh, the jacked up Escalade. Yeah. Um, uh, it was the, like the two hundred thousand. Like like it was like a six hundred horsepower. It was like a six hundred horsepower Escalade for looked awesome. <laughs> now, that, now that's, that's Canadian guys. So just you know, it was maybe maybe that's about one hundred fifty, hundred six k US, but um, yeah, two hundred thousand dollar Escalade. Again, it's a it's a GM. It, it was a shock. It was just like, really, like who's buy, where's the market for this? <laughs> Given the climate of stuff that's been going on, and you know, on top of all that, right? But it's, they're still moving. I think it's a good strategy. I actually think of it from a marketing perspective, even if it's not profitable. I think from a marketing perspective, what it does is it uh, it just brings um, I think a significant amount of eyeballs back to the brand. Uh, yeah. It shows that at the root, at the roots of the brand, they can still be high end, um, really focused on performance, luxury design. Like I love it when companies do stuff like this. You know, all right. I'm gonna read off some Elon Musk tweets, and you're gonna tell me if he <laughs> said it or not. <laughs> 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 all right this is gonna be a fun part of the show so gonna, let me get this straight you're gonna read off some random stuff and then we gotta tell you if he actually said it or not so we're gonna what jeff how well do you know elon musk like i mean i follow i i, I don't know i I, I don't say i follow his tweets i don't follow, I, that's the problem i have guys like i don't consume like any social media like at all like it yeah. just don't you know so so okay i don't know how good i'm gonna be at this but let's let's give this thing let's a try. shot but I mean, I do like I w did watch the documentary or the couple documentaries that have been about him. So, OK, let me see if I can figure this out. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, first tweet is. I knew birds weren't real. We just proved it. Next tweet is. Once again, I'm being attacked for presenting new ideas. Third tweet. We should stop making our appliances so smart. Fourth tweet. Man, if aspartame really does cause cancer, I'm dead as a door now. LOL. <laughs> I can guarantee you he did say that one. <laughs> and then the last one is, I hate when I wake up on a flight and there's a water bottle next to me. Like, oh, great. I have to be responsible for this. So... Okay. <laughs> all right There's so we go back to number one and we'll work our way through the list is that how this yeah yeah works? i think so we should do it yeah okay so oh, yeah. did he say right. the birds are real I knew birds weren't real, real or something like that say, say it one more time say it one more time i knew birds weren't real we just proved mm. it okay no i don't think he said that that doesn't sound no i'm gonna say no yeah i don't agree no, he said that. That's a tweet. Oh my god! <laughs> now, that's the way we come out swinging right there. Let's just yeah, we're, 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 well, we're zero for one. <laughs> so he said that when he launched the X brand. Is that what he did? Yeah, he's re referring to the takeover of Twitter and turning it into X. Okay. Um, All right. 
yeah he also had other tweets about i will, I will say the guy's like all the, the guy's like one of the best pr p- person in the world even though um I don't, I don't know how you um how do you market x like that was the thing actually when i first heard about it i couldn't understand necessarily how i could brand or market x like there's you know i mean i mean people use you tweeted something i mean to get a brand to the point where you know it's being used as a verb is amazing you know you googled it you tweeted it you know or you know or even if like i, I that, that that's but i mean i guess if anybody can do it it's going to be this guy but i don't know what, what, what's it going to be referred to X-ing now expletive or <laughs> I do i call do i exit <laughs> triple x i don't know like did i know. just x that crap <laughs> you should totally x that i don't know austin does sound right tweet okay, sounds better to me but right. well yeah. i agree i mean like you know i, I don't know and and like how do you i don't know i mean how, there's like tweet is just something that's kind of like it's you know it's funny like you know people like what does google mean you know like it was just it, what is a tweet you know um it's brandable it's probably you could probably put a copyright on it i don't how the hell can you copyright the word the letter x <laughs> is this an episode already, of Sesame I think Street? I saw something that said is it. He's going to do an episode of Sesame Street. I could see him doing an episode of Sesame Street. Today's yes. letter is X. Brought and to you by Elon like, Musk. <laughs> you by Elon Musk. Okay. All right. I digress. Next one. What do you got? What do you got? What's, uh, what's the second one? Uh, the second tweet was once again, I'm being attacked for presenting new ideas. Once again, I'm being attacked for presenting new ideas. I could see him yeah. saying that. I don't know. What do you man. say, Jason? He's got, he's got kind of this air about him. Like, would he even bother even saying that? You know, I don't think. I, like, I, I, I think there's a level of confidence in him. All right, that he he just doesn't even need to say that because it's just this just that's a normal thing. That's like that's like having eggs and bacon for him in the morning. You know, who doesn't get who, who's who's not saying some crap about something that he's doing? All right, I'm gonna say no. So Jeff says yes. You say no. Yep. Mm-hmm. He did not say that. That oh. was Kanye West. It's <laughs> Kanye oh, <man. laughs> West. <laughs> that makes that. more sense. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accurate assessment. Yeah, like I feel like Elon doesn't get bothered by uh, people attacking. What people him. are saying about him? True enough. I, you know, like when I think of Elon, I think of like just like a, a racehorse. You know, someone who's just very, very good at naturally putting on blinders, <laughs> just running the race, and the the results of that race, that's when he will take the blinders off and give everyone the middle finger. You know what I mean? Like, that that was SpaceX in itself, right? It was just like, it was just failure after failure, blinders, 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 and then when he's done, then when he's done doing it and showed how inexpensively he could do it compared to every other company out there, to everyone, you know what I mean? Middle finger, everyone. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Go ahead. Let's go. Uh, third one is we should stop making our appliances so smart. <laughs> okay, this is funny because like I just bought all new smart appliances. Um, like I did. I mean, like my dishwasher now has an app. <laughs> serious like you like it's being installed actually they're being delivered today uh i don't know what are they called what the hell do you need that for so you can start it from the couch you don't have to get up <laughs> well it'll tell me when it's done well i thought it was hilarious i'm like okay so I'm, i i need to know you know what cycle my dishwasher is on you know um and then it'll my send your kpi reports on his performance <laughs> 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 1.2 parts per trillion measurement today. Now the stove one I actually thought was kind of interesting because you know it's like you know how many times have like, like on the way home we're like okay the kids want a frozen pizza and I know it's going to take you know like I don't 15 know, minutes to warm 15 up minutes for it to warm up I mean so I'm, like yeah. I can literally start sense. my oven from my phone I don't know if that's a good thing is that a good thing that might be scary. Well, it probably says in the owner's manual not to do that if you're not in supervision of the oven. Just probably, to cover your ass. probably not supposed to do it when you're not in the house. <laughs> in my head, it sounded like a good idea, though. <laughs> Just like I'm on my way home, turn the oven on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I, but I, um, I will say though, all these I, here's my most annoying thing about connected appliances though. I don't know if you guys have noticed this because I, I have a bunch of them. The stupid songs they do. Oh, so after every time my 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 washing machine is done with a cycle, it's like and it's like a 30 second freaking song yeah, like, <laughs> same thing sure. with my dishwasher it's like i'm like what and it's just like i have my appliances are just all singing songs these days and it drives me nuts and i'm like it's not just like ding 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 let you know something's done no it's a 30 second song like somebody actually got paid to program this crap into my effing appliances Samsung? and they thought it was cool. <laughs> Are they Samsung appliances? <laughs> yes, yes, they are. They sing, they, I don't know. Anyways, I digress. Okay, so did he say, I say yes, because he's annoyed with it as much as I am. I say yes. Correct. Yes, <laughs> Elon Musk did say that. And I think he's referring to the, um, if they get so smart, like the whole, um, what do you call that? The singularity where uh, technology or AI outsmarts human beings. Like what will happen then? Terminator. Exactly. <laughs> My appliance is going to eat me. <laughs> My appliance. Get in the oven, Jason. <laughs> could work together. It's gonna, it's, you know what? It's going to get pissed off me one day and just turn on the gas and just leave it on. <laughs> it's going to. It's fan. All right. I get it. Totally makes sense. Okay. I want to fight back. <laughs> All right. Next one is. I hate when I wake up in a flight and there's a water bottle next to me. Like, oh, great. Now I have to be responsible for this. Okay, I'm trying to think. Because this has happened to me. I'm like, do I really give a crap? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I don't think he did because that doesn't seem to be... For me, I don't think I would even be able to process that. Like, it wouldn't even be a thought. Like, this just seems like a, a, a to even think that is a waste of just brain space. You know? Like, well, like why... Well, like, I'm just trying to think what mindset do you need to be in when you wake up on a plane and you're like, oh shit, there's a water there and I need to be responsible for that. That seems like just way too much brain effort for a guy like Elon. So I'm going to say yeah. he didn't say it because I don't even, it wouldn't even cross my effing mind to think that like, oh, this is an inconvenience because I have to be responsible for it. Like what the heck? It's a fucking bottle of water. It's there. Drink it or don't drink it. Who the hell cares? Way too much brain power wasted on a on a dumb idea. <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Makes sense. I'm okay. going with that. No, as well. I, I agree. I'm gonna that, go with that. Makes sense. The theory. That was <laughs> Kanye as well. <laughs> okay, he totally makes sense on who would waste their brain power on a stupid thought like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you know Elon's thought processes quite well. Well, I'm just thinking um, like. There's almost okay. So Elon, I can't remember. You have to find it for me, Oscar, because I remember the name of it. He actually has a uh, a methodology to how he approaches his day and his time management, and um, there there's it, it's it's a pretty like actively practiced thing. And I practice portions of the exact same kind of thing. It's just there's look, there's only so much time in a day. There's only so much brain juice you got, and you just can't waste it on stupid stupid thoughts like that. That's a that's just a stupid thought. It's just not worth it, but yeah, I don't know. Would you, Jeff? Would you even wake up and even just think that? Oh my god, I have to. I have to take care of this bottle of water. Like, no, <laughs> I'd probably crack it open and say, "Thank God, I'm thirsty." <laughs> uh, my question would be, why is it a bottle of water, not a brandy or scotch? Yeah. Why is it not? What do they not know me? Well, especially you know, he's not, not flying with the regular airline, right? <laughs> they better know. A double Woodford with uh, with rocks. <laughs> that's what I want to wake up to. <laughs> Apparently Elon has his daily schedule broken into five minute intervals. Yeah. yeah. And what's it called? I think it, there's a system to it. I can't remember what the system's called. Did you find that? What's called the system's called? Um, but I mean, I like this. Oh, time boxing. That's it. Time, it's time boxing. boxing. That's what it's called. It's called time boxing. Look, I don't do it to his extreme, but I do practice portions of this technique. And um, I, I would think anybody that practices this type of technique uh, called time boxing, if you're watching and listening, by the way, and you are like, I mean, you want to take your productivity to another effing level. Seriously, look at this. I'm not saying you have to follow it verbatim, but there's definitely elements that you can tie into it. Time boxing is a real thing. 
it is I call it there was a book I read called Deep Work. It reminds me a lot of that. I kind of blend time boxing and deep work kind of at the same time. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's just about getting shit done. It's just and it's a documenting it, writing it and pushing yourself. And I kind of keep it in my notes. So I kind of have like my content to do's, how those to do's yeah. will rotate based on priority levels and stuff like that. So and but I just know anybody that would employ this type of methodology to their day would never have a stupid thought like that. So that that was my whole point. There we go. What's the <laughs> what's the next one? <clears throat> I can tell you Kanye West does not time box. <laughs> <laughs> He might hot box. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> time boxing. But well, so he hot boxing too. <laughs> well, that's he time cool. boxed his hot box. <laughs> Great, efficient. That's all. Like close. Uh, the productive. Be productive. The last tweet is, man, if aspartame really does cause cancer, I'm dead as a doornail. LOL. Yeah. Drink diet coke or diet pop. <laughs> I can see this 100 percent being true. I mean, I think you know. I remember like the very first early documentary I watched of Elon. It was just like this guy just looked like just hardcore geek, right? Like, you know, he grew up in his in a basement playing video games and eating hot pockets and 100 percent drinking anything that had aspartame and everything that had aspartame in it. Like, I mean, I mean, I don't. I, yeah, I I don't see him being super health conscious um if it i i can see again it's 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 not a great thing but it's but you've seen his his body weight fluctuate well right? he skips a lot of meals too right so yeah I mean, he, gonna... he fluctuates so i don't know how much <laughs> i mean i'm sure he probably at one point had someone employed that was maintaining and watching his intakes and stuff but like yeah i i want to say yes i think he did say it yeah i think so <laughs> cool. You are both correct. He did say yeah. that. Did they say what reference would drink in reference to? Like, I'm curious because Diet I Coke not, is it was just a tweet. Just, just a tweet. A, Diet Coke is your thing, right, tweet. Jeff? I've seen you have cases of that crap. No, not Diet Coke. I don't drink Diet Coke. Oh, it's not once you. in a while. If I've got like, uh, you know, after you've been sick or when you're just about to get sick, you get that your throat is like scratchy and irritated. Mm -hmm. I'll go and buy a Diet Coke and just chug it because it like seems that to burn never once crossed shit my out of your throat. But I don't really so, like that. So I it kills I bacteria. Is what you're saying? Like I've did my that's that's some interesting logic, Jeff. Because I normally when my throat is scratchy or something like that, I go get a cough drop. You go get a Diet Coke. Yeah, so yeah. I, <laughs> I might have to try this strategy. Right. No, but it's like it, it, it actually kind of gets rid of that. Because it coats the crap out of your mouth? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Hey, it makes sense. I mean, I know some people that are I don't know. are addicted to ass. Like, I mean, oh, like just hardcore. But well, my aunt drinks probably like three or four Diet Cokes a day. I'm like, I don't know. My mom, up until probably about 10 years ago, was at a definite six pack a day Diet Coke. Holy like, mackerel. Like, just hardcore. Like, I think at one point she even said we could bury her with a case of diet coke you know i think that's changed since then so, you know that, that but yes there's i i think there's a hundred percent there's there's enough uh i think reports out there and proof that aspartame does not process well in your body uh can it cause cancer i don't know it seems like this day's well they've been talking about that since the not. 80s so i can't imagine <laughs> yeah i mean um, probably like, everything does so why not but 100 percent God, though, I mean, but you know what, though, at car dealerships, dude, oh, I mean, I knew guys were just, I mean, they would have cases just sitting next to their desk, Coke or, you know, or Diet Coke or something like that. Um, I remember, you know, when a well, monster is still a pretty big thing, but I remember monster was huge in the early, late, late oh, 90s yeah. and early 2000s. And it's just like, I mean, the guys just literally show up to Saturday morning meeting with like three monsters in their hands. And I'm like going, you know, I will say, <laughs> I think car dealerships probably add a good percentage of consumed aspartame um, in the entire in the entire country for sure. Anyways, did we have any others, or did we go up from? Did we go? What what was our score? How do we do? How do we do? Uh, what was, what I think was Jason won by getting uh, 
four to five, and then Jason and then Jeff got three out of the five. All right, Jeff. It's all good. <laughs> it's like the it's probably like the ninth time I've ever actually used that board for something. So I'm really happy. I got seven were the other day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the other day was the other day. <laughs> all right. All right. Here is Volkswagen's funny. Okay, Volkswagen had some of the best commercials, <laughs> like some of the best marketing <laughs> campaigns ever. So, I would love to find out which one you chose because I am a huge. I'm not a huge Volkswagen fan, but I'm a huge Volkswagen marketing, marketing fan. fan. I I can't remember the name, <clears> of the channel, <throat> but to me, he was probably one of the most ingenious message developers of our like just of the last hundred years. Like, okay, so which one did you pick? Let me show, all right, lay it on us. I mean, this one's pretty funny. I don't know any of the context, but it just says lemon underneath this car. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a story there, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's ugly, but it gets you there. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much truth and beauty in their messaging. It's ugly, but it's going to get you there. Well, all right, that's true. <laughs> what else? What was your favorite of this? There's a few videos later on that are pure gold. Are they pure gold? <laughs> Do we get to help them? you up the corporate ladder? Just drive it into work and just drive it into work early and work really hard. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Too, maybe, eh? maybe the reason I think I was I've been so passionate. I, I love Volkswagen marketing is because it's just like to me, it's like a Mr. Obvious, right? Like there's like you gotta understand, like at this point in time. Um, in the fifties and sixties is where it started and it, and it is gone all the way up until this point, but this is when vehicles became a lifestyle, not just a modes of transportation. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now that you might've saw bits and pieces of that going into like the roaring twenties, but that was still a very small niche percentage. And, you know, it, the thirties and forties, it was about practicality and there was a, still a very small niche when it comes to lifestyle. But the 50s and 60s, the 50s and 60s is when it started. And it started that, you know, like the vehicle you drove represented, it, it was a representation of you. Um, and it was representation of your class. If you were, you know, upper class, mid level, because you got to think that's when, you, gotta, you know, um, middle class is when you saw, you saw middle class get developed in the 50s and 60s, all right? So people were leaving the cities, they're building these suburbs, and we created this middle class. And, you know, so, so now you started getting, well, it's like, okay, well, I got to represent myself. You know, there was this need, this desire to represent myself and to define who I was to everybody out there that was looking at me or, or knew something about me. So, so you saw, I mean, you saw so much. I mean, the one I like, and I think we watched it the other day, is the 19, 1955 Ford T-Bird. All right, the spokesman for 1955 oh, T Bird was one of my favorite individuals in the world, Bing Crosby, right? An iconic character, you know, and you literally see him say it, you know, it's like if you're not a Ford man, then you're not a man. You know, it's just like <laughs> he's just implying, you know, this type of like if you want is if you want to be like me or similar to me or or or, or have this type of uh uh let's call it swagger, all right you drive a T-Bird, all right? Mm -hmm. You don't drive something else. And, and that was the beginning. That was the beginning of this, just this amazing movement in marketing. And you still see this today where like, I mean, look at, you know, look at Jeep, okay? Like, you know, you know, every Jeep Wrangler advertisement out there you're going to find is it driving up the side of a mountain or going through a freaking river. Yet over 90% of Jeeps sold never leave the pavement because they're selling a lifestyle. And then here comes Volkswagen. And it doesn't do that. <laughs> it's like everybody out there, right, is just saying that you're not a you're not a ladies' man if you don't drive this, and you're not you're not a guy's guy if you're not driving that, and you're not a you know you're, you're not a. It was just it was so much of that, and then Volkswagen comes out in the fifties and sixties, and they go the polar opposite direction of that, and it was almost just like obvious and truth 
and just simplicity. And I think it, it did such an amazing job of cutting through this noise where you need to be represented by the vehicle you drove, or just necessarily the practicality. You know, it's ugly, but it's going to get you there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're kind of going like anti, um, what am I trying to say? You know, what was socially acceptable? What was, what was you know, what people, you know, you, you're kind of like, correct, maybe. Maybe. Well, like yes, right? yes, yes, yes. You're, you're being, you're being the, the, the anti version of that. I love that. Okay. Give me another example. I love the one that's working. That's great. You want, you want, what, you want to climb the, climb the corporate ladder. Drive this car to work and work your your ass off. Work, get there early and work really, really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. Get to work early and work really hard. And this there one's just go. an ostrich in a cheetah costume. Fast <laughs> just got faster. That was a recent ad too, I think. <laughs> that was pretty was recent. It? I think so. I think that tagline came out a couple of years ago. <clears throat> two years. I, again, my concept of time is gone. So 1964 snowplow snow commercial. Oh, this could be good. I don't think I drive a Volkswagen a snowplow. <laughs> okay, there's no way that thing even moved in that type of snow. <laughs> well, it probably could. It's, they always had the smaller yeah, tires. That's true. A little team, little teams, right? Have you ever wondered how the man who drives a snowplow drives oh, I remember a snowplow? I've seen it before. <laughs> this one drives a Volkswagen. So you can stop wondering. <laughs> you can stop. I love it. See, it's just, it, that's not lifestyle. That's practicality. Right. Like here was here was the thing in the 50s and 60s. Everybody was talking, was marketing at their consumers and telling their consumers that they needed to own this to be this. Right. Yeah. Or Volkswagen with the polar opposite of that. And they were talking to their consumers, not at their consumers. You got another example of this? What would what, you find? Yep. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, a little technical problem. We'll get it fixed. It's all good. Austin. We got a little polar bear here. A polar bear? A dog? What is that? <laughs> Air conditioning. <laughs> On the outside of the car. <laughs> Some of these European commercials, never mind. Volkswagen. Fucking hell. That's <laughs> auto. Yeah. So that was about <laughs> air conditioning and the power of VW's air. There we go. Like, I will say, <clears throat> there's nothing sexy about Volkswagen's commercials. Do you know what I mean? Like, they just they never they never claim to be glamorous and sexy. They just practical. And uh, anyways, I love it. I I think Volkswagen did such a good one. Was is, I think is, this that is my the, favorite one of the bunch? Favorite? Okay, all right, all right. Let's see your favorite. What we got? <laughs> this one. This one's is interesting. This Star Wars one. This is obviously a remix. Like, what the heck's going on here? Well, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> There's deep fake here. We've got the uh, Gene, Gene, Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly. There we go. This is Gene Kelly. Okay. Yeah. Dancing in the rain or singing in the rain or something, right? Singing in the rain. The new Golf GTI just got updated. <laughs> the original got updated. <laughs> I love it. I think that's awesome. I've never seen that one. I'm also a big Gene Kelly fan, so that's also very helpful, too. It's actually one of my kids' favorite scenes. Um, see, there you go. Uh, that, that was the other thing uh, that I think you're going to find. If you go back and you look at a lot of the Volkswagen 
especially take a look in the 70s. Um, even during, you know, even during the time of war and stuff like that. The one thing I found found very interesting with Volkswagen is that they kept it very, call it socially relevant. A lot of their marketing was always very socially relevant uh, to the time, right? Um, I, I love it. Big fan of Volkswagen marketing. And I, and I think there's a lot of things that we can learn, the dealerships out there can learn from that and actually put into their marketing efforts, you know, right now. I think that 100% they can learn into that. You know, I think the one thing you see there is the, the, the consistency in being socially relevant, right, at, at that time, right? So it's not, it's not marketing... For, for making marketing, but it's marketing for what is going on in the world at that given moment, you know? Um, and then I also think that there's just this level of kind of practicality that comes with it. You know, it's like, guys, we were talking about this a little bit earlier when we're talking about emails, right? You know, it's just like <laughs> to, <coughs> excuse me, to, um, to make this long drawn out email that's, you know, Hey, how's it going? I hope your family's good. Just to get to a, a point in the email, a singular sentence. And it actually is the point of the email. It's the same thing with the marketing here. Like there's no fluff. There's not fluff around it. It's just straight to the point. Um, and I think that there's, there's, there's value in, in being uh, very transparent and straight to the point with that. You know, it's, it's, I'm not having I'm not trying to sell you a bill of goods. All right. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to sell you a car. All right. And here's just one of 100 reasons why you should buy this. That, that's, that's okay. I think there we go. That is what, if you can take away from Volkswagen that I think dealers struggle with today is Volkswagen was very good at just why. Why a Volkswagen, right? Uh, where man, other manufacturers didn't go that direction. They went the other direction. They're like, you know, if you want to be represented like this, you need this. So if you want to you be want known. To be like Bing Crosby, you can... <laughs> Yeah, like if you want to be known as an outdoors mountain climbing person, buy this, right? If you want to be known as somebody who is successful and has made it uh, their career, buy this. If you want someone who, if you want to be known as someone who's, uh, um, you know, that um, is environmentally conscious, buy this, you know? So like, so what they're doing is they're building products that match a, a, a something that you want to be represented by. And like I said, folks, I can do that. And I think the dealerships can do the exact same thing. It's like, you don't need to necessarily be representative by it. It's just like, here, here's my why. Here's the why. Why actually purchase this? You know, um, and I, you know, I've said this again on multiple podcasts out there, right? I mean, the best marketing strategy is not what you do. Because guess what? You got a 35-foot sign outside your dealership that says exactly what you do. All right? Why you do it, the way you do it, that's why people want to connect with it. And that's ultimately what they want to purchase. That's why they purchase from you from somebody else. It's it's not because of what you do, because you do the same thing that 37 other dealerships do. All right. You sell and service whatever brand you are on your building. <laughs> it's on your building. You sell and service it. That's great. That's you, you, the what is there. All right. Too much marketing out there is around the what. All right. Like the marketing around the why. Why did you buy this? Why am I connected with this? It's it's not what you do. It's why you do it the way you do it that people ultimately want to buy. And I think that's one thing that you'll find consistent in some of the, the uh, marketing with folks are, is they were very good about practical whys. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good and ones. I think awesome. they're, they're doing it in a fun and entertaining way too. So they're driving home that why in a very consumable method. Like they're putting a lot of uh, effort into how they present that why yes and look we've had some great examples of that um in dealership you know in dealership world like let's take a look at um uh, the badger <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I, look it's an iconic marketing the badger commercials were incredibly iconic and God, awesome. i think they're over 20 some odd years old now but all right oh, there really? was is, is, are they? Are they 30? Oh, I'd say at least. Are they? Really? Holy crap. So what do you <laughs> Joe, guys, Pull one up. Pull one up. Pull, pull one up. it up. This is feeling like a good Badger commercial. Hey, let's go inside and uh, make us a deal. Well, can I take on a test drive first? All right. I'll go get the keys. I don't want to spend all day doing this, you know. I got a lot of cars to sell. Let's go back and do a deal. Well, can I take it on the highway first? 
Hey, if this is going to be a joy ride, I got playing customers back there on the lot. Tired of being badgered? Come to any Johnson Automotive dealership. Great deals, great service, no badgers. <laughs> hey, buddy, how about us making us a deal? Oh, this is my favorite. I like her a lot. My favorite. How much wiggle room we got on the price? Wiggle room? Wiggle room. I'll show you wiggle room. Wiggle, wiggle, whoa. 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 How's that? Huh? We got us a deal going. Wiggle, wiggle, whoa. Wiggle, wiggle, whoa. Wiggle, wiggle. Tired of being badgered? Come to any Johnson Automotive dealership. Great deals, great service, no badgers. Yep. You Come on, dude. Good in that car. Yeah, that's <laughs> so we ready to sign this deal. Well, Guys, I mean, there's so much practicality to the messaging here, right? There's, it's just a simple why, you know, tired of being badgered? Come to us, right? Like, they didn't go into detail how they're a family-owned company and, you know, they're number one in CSI and blah, 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 blah. No, they just, it was a simple, practical message. Are you tired of getting badgered? Just come see us. That's it. Simple, practical, all right, socially relevant, you know, when, you know, when these videos were coming out, you know, it was, it was very well kind of perceived as going out and buying a car was just, you know, someone was going to be badgering the crap out of you or bugging you, you know, um, there was another great one too, called the trunk monkey. Um, if anybody out there watching and listening and you want to look up another good one, it was the trunk monkey. Uh, I like the trunk monkey because it goes more into the why, um, but <laughs> But, but, but guys, like this is, this is what we're talking about. These are just two amazing, iconic examples of, but, but you understand like what at the core of both these examples, it's not come buy a car for me because I'm family owned and I've been in the area for 57 years and my dad's dad's been running the dealership, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It's, that's not it. All right. It is, it's the why it's simple, practical, socially relevant, um, why, and you know, the, these, 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 there's so much simplicity in that messaging that here we are 20 some odd later years later, and we're still in talking about it. Like, you know, I mean, Jeff, how many sales people don't know the badger? Oh, everybody has watched it there. I'm sure. I mean, I've dude, it's so iconic. They actually came out like cool. seven, right? So it's well, like 20 something years ago now, right? Like, like, dude, it's 20 some years ago. Like, I mean, it's just, but because there's simplicity and there's real relevant value around it. It's just, you know, that, that that's what someone wants to, like, why do I want to buy something from you? This is simple because we're not going to badger you. You're not going to get this experience. You want to pull up, we got some time. You want to pull up a trunk monkey commercial? <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that one. You've never seen the trunk monkey? I don't think so. I, don't, I can't remember. It was a group in Detroit. Want to say it was a suburban group? Maybe I'm wrong though. It's been a long time. Did you find it, Austin? Yeah. All right, you got to pass that here first. There we go. We got it. Here we go. Here we go. I do remember this now. The Trunk Monkey Theft Retrieval System. Because sometimes getting your car back is simply not enough. Another revolutionary idea. Jeez. You'll only find at Suburban Auto Group. Then the there we go, Suburban Auto Group. Here we are. I still can't believe my dad let us even touch his new car. Really? <laughs> the monkey slaps the guy as he goes in for a kiss. <laughs> Man, he couldn't do this today. <laughs> the trunk monkey version, an innovative idea you'll only find. Okay, so let's break this one down. The trunk monkey. Look, the trunk money uh, monkey gave personality, right? Um, it was uh, fun and entertaining. You know, and I, I, I think that when you think of, of going to purchase a vehicle, fun and entertaining is not what you think of. And this was just a great example of a group saying, like, look, we're, we're a bit different. OK, we like to have a giggle just as much as anybody else. So here you go. Here's a Trump movie. Um. <laughs> oh, Jesus. 
The other one was oh, I always liked was the Robert De Niro one. Oh my gosh, but that wasn't even a commercial. That was a movie. Yeah, in the movie, what movie was it though? I can't remember. Wanna, um, you want to talk to the boss? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it was so we'll, have to save that. we'll save that for another. We'll save that for another. Yeah, yeah. We'll find it and pull it up. We'll have Austin go out and find like most iconic, like automotive, like movie clips and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a good one though. We're gonna have to get that one. All right. What else? We, um, we're getting towards the tail end. What, what else we got for today's docket? Uh, we can talk about the Pontiac Aztec and the <laughs> strategy <laughs> fail there. What, what uh, where did they go wrong, okay, Jason? Where All did right, they go so, right. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, where did it go right? Um, look, I think anything out there, um, like, I, I, I <laughs> every good idea doesn't necessarily end in a good idea, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I think of the Pontiac Aztec, and I re- I'm reminded of this, um, episode from the simpsons by the way search it out for me real quick while we're doing this all right uh, there's 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 a scene where um homer's brother all right um owns a car manufacturer right and you know and he has this great idea that he's gonna let his brother homer all right design a car of the future right and you know and it's it's it's, it's kind of making fun of some of the manufacturers like at that point in time because you know it was just like constant like well, I don't care. I don't need to know what he's doing. It doesn't make any difference to me. You know, just let him do whatever he wants, you know? And it's because like, because I think at that point in time, there was some things that were coming out in cars that were so ridiculous. You're like, how the hell did you even think that was a good idea? You know? And then here comes the Pontiac Aztec. And it was like the perfect epitome of like, how the hell did this thing get past a group of people that said, yeah, let's build let's this. Do this. You know, let's take something that kind of looks like a minivan but rides a little bit more like a crossover and let's put like monster chunk of plastic all the way around it and you know this fall off by the way oh yes (laughs) yeah you know it's like we're gonna create this adventure vehicle okay you found the simpsons episode let's all right here we go homer building a car okay homer pick out anyone you want are you sure you want to give me a car hey you know what these things cost me there's maybe 40 bucks the worth of steel in them. Oh. Okay. <laughs> See, making fun of the yeah, like a big one, then. We don't have a big one. Why not? Because Americans don't want big cars. Well, then give me one with lots of pep. Sorry, our cars don't have pep. Why not? Uh, because Americans want good mileage, not pep. Homer, tell the nice man what country you come from. America. Get, get out, you morons. <laughs> this is why we're getting killed in the marketplace. Instead of listening to what people want, you're telling them what they want. Homer, I need your help. You do? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to help me. Okay. Now you gotta fast forward it to actually find the actual car. car out there. And you know, I'm towards the you end. Do. From now on, before you say anything, <laughs> return. A little. Oh, okay. Some things are so snazzy they never go out of style, like tail pins and bubble dome I and shag carpeting. Uh huh. Shag carpeting. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, all right. Okay. This- Job. <laughs> and do, Mr. S. And sometimes the kids are in the back seat. They're hollering. They're making you nuts. There's got to be something you can do about that. Maybe a built-in video game would keep them entertained. You're fired. What is my brother paying you for? What about a separate soundproof bubble dome for the kids with optional restraints and muzzles? Bullseye! And another thing. Muzzles. When I go to <laughs> muzzles. Right. Think That's words, perfect. That's enough. Thanks. All right. I, I think the fact that, you know, we he's designing a vehicle where there's going to be muzzles and restraints for your kids. I get Sign idea. me up. I, 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 I will put my prayer order in. I'll put my pre-order in right now. But to the point, this is, it just seemed, this is what the Aztec was, was just some one person's kind of crazy idea, not necessarily thinking of who was actually going to use the thing or like, this is what everybody wants and I don't need to know about anything else and I'm just going to go and build it. Um, And that was the Pontiac Aztec. Now I have sold this car. I have. Uh, It was actually probably one of the first cars. I think I was, I would say, because really, really early on when I was a salesperson, I'd, I'd be willing to say it was probably one of the first 10 or 12 cars I ever sold was this Aztec. And I remember it. Be, and the reason I remember it is because there was a $500 spiff on this car. 
Oh, yeah. On the lot. It was the yellow one. It was it had been on the lot for such a long period of time uh, that there was uh, then that's that's how back in the day you got rid of used cars. You just spiff them, which, by the way, he's now we that's another podcast. It's a stupid strategy. But anyways, it was like I was young. Five hundred bucks meant a really good night out for me and my buddies. All right. I was sure the hell going to sell this car. That was and and it was that Saturday I made the commitment. It means every person that came in, regardless of the vehicle they were interested in, I was going to show them this Aztec. Right. And, <laughs> and I, remember gonna buy this thing. I remember how I did it. I actually went and got the keys and I kept the keys in my pocket all day long. I actually moved the car around back. So you couldn't see it. All right. So they would come in, they look for something. I said, man, that's amazing. But you know what? I got something for you. It's a round back. It's not up front. I'm not, I'm not showing it to everybody. I got to show you this, All right? And I would take them around back, and that failed multiple times. But I did. I did sell that 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 day. By the end of the day, and I think the only reason I sold it was because I hit it out back, and I made it a thing. <laughs> I made it a thing. But you know, I convinced somebody that this was your your perfect adventure vehicle. Why buy a Jeep Wrangler when you can own an Aztec? Was pretty much that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said they, from 2001 to 2005, I did a quick Google search here because I couldn't even remember when that thing came out. <laughs> but around 119,000 Pontiac Aztecs were actually produced before GM finally pulled the plug on it, right? 2002, it was, or 01, it, well, maybe it was 01. Yeah, 01 yeah, to 05, right? 2000, so, and then I didn't get into sales. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, it would have been 2000 as a 2001 model. That's what it would have been. So, yes. So GM needed to sell in the first year at least 30,000 units, and they missed the mark. Yep. How many yeah. did they sell the first year? 27,000 the first year. I don't know how the hell they sold. I sold one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were, you were contributing. I sold one of them that first year. <laughs> you contributed to the burden. I contributed to the burden. I occasionally still see them on the road, and it just – cracks me up you know um but there have been examples of that in the past as well but i think that's an interesting story to where nowadays you hear so much about how salespeople are just order takers and they're yeah. um they're not really selling the vehicle you know and i think as as people have a bunch of stock that they need to get rid of uh where the supply is not low anymore i think people do need to become more like you like your story just talked about being coming up with creative ways to sell a vehicle <laughs> got to be strategic guys um i guess that's what it is right i mean that's actually a really good point us and it's valuable insight there um you know i i think there was a there was a there was an a bit of showmanship required i think when i first started selling cars and jeff you were probably the same too right like there was just there was a bit of showmanship that had to kind of go along with it. And there's a, there, there's, there's a fine line between showmanship and then just being like straight up cheesy and, you know, maybe sometimes unethical. Right. So like, I mean, the showmanship, I don't want, I don't want people to think that there's like, you can be a showman and not cross a line. Right. I mean, I, you know, uh, uh, sh but def definitely there was, and there had to be some strategic strategy behind it. You know, like me moving that car to the back of the lot and not leaving it up front. All right. Was a strategy. And what I did is I created kind of this, so, Ooh, what is that? You know, I only had a handful of them come in and there was this yellow one and that's the one I moved in the back and I wasn't showing it to everybody. I was only showing it to a handful of people. I showed it to everybody. Um, but there was... <laughs> But yes, there's, I, I think that is missing. That is missing today. There's, there's the, um, and I don't want to say selling because I don't think I ever harsh sold any bun, right? But there was a bit of showmanship, I, I think, I think to it, you know, um, you know, and I, and I think that's been, that's been lost over the last few years, well, you know, sure. where, you know, it's just like, you know, look, we all know that the vehicle that, you know, with seven times out of 10, the vehicle that the customer comes in for is not the one they ultimately end up purchasing. But because of inventory issues and chip issues and a half a dozen other issues over the last few years, um, it's pretty much just whatever the hell we have on the lot is what you're going to take. And if you don't want it, I don't really care. Let's we'll just move on. Right. Um, so, yes, the for sure, 
that art of presenting that art that showmanship has been lost over the last few years don't you think don't you think jeff yeah even like just seeing you know we've done a couple of private sales recently right and mm -hmm. customers going out on a on a test drive and not even going on the test drive with them that's just unfathomable. i almost had like coronary <laughs> the dealer. i'm like you just sent a customer so the customer came back on a fairly new technology vehicle plug-in they, they, they'd they never driven themselves never they been don't. in their life they had a very similar gas version a couple years older but not as much technology and the customers went out they were back within four minutes and and i said what happened there and the salesperson said they didn't like it they felt like there was too much going on <laughs> because it's got you know gauges that will tell you Course, that the, the engine's running and the power's being driven to the batteries. Not the engine's running to drive the car; it's driving the generator, or the the how it's generating all the power, how many kilowatts it's using, and you have screens on screens on screens that you can go through, right? Oh, like I, I, think I, I went to the GM and I said, "Why did the salesperson not go on the test drive?" Oh, they normally do. I said, "I haven't seen a single person go on a test drive all week." And to me, it was always important to take, not just go with them drive the car first so that i could talk about the features this is what's going to happen of course. and hey i've had even you know, something silly happen where it, the dealer plate was put on the wiper arm right and it flipped around because it was windy and the customer was like oh what was that i'm like it's probably just the dealer plate because they would have been freaked out thinking there was something wrong with the car if they were by themselves right a good example. i've had a customer leave it a uh, tiptronic in the lower gear by accident they, they went too far and passed drive right Think there's something wrong with the transmission i'm like no you just gotta pop it back in the drive here well but so you're right though you've got to be there to explain certain things like you said and get them excited like show them the 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 cool new technologies how it works make them comfortable i'm not saying you gotta go for a 40 minute test drive but three four minutes down the road designated route that you normally take pull over let them go and just answer their questions if they have any right dude 100 percent. i mean look at um today the Hyundai Elantra has over 10 and a half inches of screens. <laughs> it's crazy. So, I mean, just to put that in perspective, you know, like, you know, the distance between here and here is, you know, roughly about, you know, six, six inches. So, you know, there's, you know, and so there's going to be about this much screen in a Hyundai Elantra. There's going to be a lot of crap on there. <laughs> it's going to be a lot like... Yeah. and different pages there's so much like you know what i mean like the, that's that's a that's a that's a 18 inch screen back there yeah and think about it, like there are you know what is it the new mercedes has like 31 inches of screen it's, the, whole dash. Like it's the entire bloody dash. it is you know, like, I, <laughs> it looks awesome but it's it would be a lot to take in yes and you know you're 100 right i think so much now with new hybrid technologies and so many new ev like uh, i I think but there's I think, some amazing salespeople out there that are doing great jobs. Yeah. But, you know, I think there's a large portion, especially, you know, the people that have been around for the last few years that, you know, why give them the training? What are they need training for? If it's in stock, they're going to buy it. Whatever, you yeah, know, like is that. that we are going to have to get back to basics and, you know, teach these people how to be consultants, not order takers. You know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I think honestly, they should have never been an order taker. They should have been always a consultant, right? Because, you know, people are well, coming you in. you want to build to me the relationship for the long term is really what it is, right? And I think also, yes, there was inventory things that exasperated it. But even before we had these inventory issues, it seemed to me there was a decline in that showmanship with salespeople because they were feeling the customer already knew everything from the internet. They had way more information, right? So they didn't really maybe know themselves so they didn't really want to get involved so they kind of just lost that art of you know narrowing down and showing the customer the features and the benefits that that were explained to them from the customer that they pulled out to say this is what i'm looking for in a car right because like the people you showed that aztec to they probably weren't looking for that aztec when they walked in i can guarantee you they were but i blew their mind I but blew their mind when I, I there made was something that when resonated they walked, when they drove away at that Aztec, they were grinning ear to ear and they were just the coolest, hottest thing on the road at the time. Um, <laughs> for sure. Um, 
No, you're right. You're right. The industry definitely needs to kind of get back to some basics. I think there's some amazing operators that are doing that, but I still think there's a lot of room, you know, and then we can complain how we're losing market share to, you know, companies like Carvana and other stuff out there. It's like, well, I mean, look, if you're not going, if you're not going to go the distance and provide, all right, an actual purchase experience, then, 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 then why do I even need one? What, what, what do I need even a purchase experience for? This is just going to be like ordering something off of Amazon. You know, um, yeah. yeah, you know, like, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's funny. I, I just bought a new pair of shoes and like Amazon's, you want to try it out for seven days before you buy it? I'm like, really? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so I bought a new pair of boots, try them out for seven days before I decide I want them or not. Like, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's becoming more of a socially acceptable thing. But the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, there's, you know, what is the buying experience when I go in to buy a pair of boots? Nothing. There's a wall of boots. Go pick one out. You're lucky That's if you it. can find somebody to help you get the I'm size. I'm lucky if I can help find somebody, <laughs> let alone answer any of my questions of which one is actually good or bad or why I should look at this. They brand don't check to see if it fits your feet. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You know, so why would I not just, you know, I know I'm a, I know I'm a size 10. I'm not going to just order it online. Yeah. You know, and I just think that as an industry, if we continue to not provide a buying experience, right? Um, then, 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 why not just order it online for an Amazon and I'll get a seven day trial and then I'll return if I don't like it. Anyways, I know we're like the tail end of our conversation today. Um, awesome. Was there anything you wanted to finish off with us today? Or that's it for today. That's it for today. This was good, guys. I like this. It was a lot of fun. Well, hey, everyone out there watching and listening, we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us ramble. Um, this is something that we're going to do on a regular basis. So please watch out when you get notifications when these things come in. Again, we appreciate you taking the time watching or listening today. Thank you, everyone. Have yourselves an amazing day. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to the Coffee with Jeff and Jason podcast with your hosts, Jeff Tessier and Jason Harris. Don't want to miss out on new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.